Hi, it's Allie and welcome back to Allie and a Book. So today's video is going to be a book haul. I purchased 20 books this past month and I want to tell you all about them. Now these books that I purchased are books that I could not find at the library. So I have library cards to three different libraries in the surrounding area. And when I want to read a book, I check all three libraries to make sure that they don't have them before I purchase them. If the library does have them, I would much prefer to borrow the book first and only purchase it if I absolutely loved the book. Now, these books that I do have here, as I said, I did not find at the library. So these are books that I want to read, but the library did not have them. So I have lots of books to get through, so let's go ahead and get started. First is A Touch of Gold by Annie Sullivan. Now this book is about King Midas' daughter. Now a lot of us know the story of King Midas and how everything he touched turned to gold, including his wife and his daughter. Now this story is somewhat of a retelling, uh, but it's more so a sequel to the King Midas story that we all know. So King Midas' daughter has after effects of being gold. So she has this ability where she can sense gold. Now in this book, a thief comes to the palace and steals the gold that is so important to her father. So she goes on a mission to track down this thief and the gold that he stole. So I'm really interested in reading this book um, I've never really read a book about King Midas or even heard of a book, so it seems very unique. The next book is The Looking Glass by Jeanette McNally, and this story is about two sisters. It has some fairy tale stories within this book. It says in here, Sylvie has to find out if the strange, almost magical thing she's been seeing, a figure in a red cape walking a wolf, a silver shoe abandoned by a fleeing girl in blue, have anything to do with Julia's whereabouts. So her sister goes missing and all these fairy tales keep showing up to Sylvie. And I'm really interested in, to see how they put in all these fairy tales in this book. Next is Odd and True by Cat Winters. Now this story is about two sisters as well, Odette and True, and they are monster hunters. So I'm super excited to read this. It has a little bit of a, an historical vibe to it and it has monsters in it. So it kind of gives me a feel kind of like the show Supernatural. If you've ever seen that, there's two brothers who fight monsters to save other people. And so instead of two brothers, this is two sisters. So I'm very excited that I have this book. Next is The Cold in Her Bones by Peter Nell Van Arsdale. And this story is about Mila and her brother Niklaus. And they try to stay out of the village as much as possible because demons travel to the village. It has just been the two of them for a very long time until they meet Iris. Now Iris ends up going to the village and a demon takes over her and kidnaps her. And this story is about Mila trying to find Iris to save her. But Mila may be becoming a demon herself. So same thing kind of as odd and true a little bit. Kind of reminds me of Supernatural. Um, I'm not a huge fan of like demons and possessions, but I've heard some good things about this book. So I thought I might as well go ahead and try it. Next is Hunted by the Sky by Tanaz Bathina. And this is a fantasy novel set in medieval India. And it's about this girl who has a star-shaped birthmark. And girls in this world who have star-shaped birthmarks have magical ability, warrior abilities. Now her mom was killed by the king and his soldiers and she takes these abilities and she wants revenge. I'm super excited to read this. I have never read a book that is based in India and I'm trying to branch out with my books to read books that are based all around the world so that I can read about different cultures and other places. Next, I have Slay by Brittany Morris. Now, Slay is about Kiara, who is a teenage honor student, and she has coded and created her own video game. Now, this video game has been accused of being the cause for someone being murdered in Kansas, and this is about Kiara trying to deal with the backlash from that. I don't typically read books about video games, um, but I thought this was interesting with it being a female lead and it having a little bit more to it other than it just being specifically about the gaming. Next, I have Buried Beneath a Baobab Tree. And I'm not going to try to pronounce the author's name. I would definitely not even be close to pronouncing it right. 
but the author is Nigerian born and this story takes place in Nigeria. Now, this is a fiction novel, but it is based off of true events. So in 2014, Boko Haram kidnapped 276 girls. Some of these girls have been found, some of them are still missing. But this author went around and interviewed the found girls and the girls' families that are still missing. I thought this would be a very interesting read um, since it is somewhat of a current event. I'm not very good at keeping up on global current events. Here in the United States, I think we're very sheltered from a lot of what goes on in the world because we are so privileged here. Um, so I think this will be make me more aware of a little bit of what's going on elsewhere. Next I have I Wanna Be Where You Are by Christina Forrest. Now this is about a teenage girl who loves ballet and she wants to go to this ballet school to chase her dreams, but her mother doesn't want her to go. So this whole book is about her journey of following her dreams. I thought this would be a great lighthearted read, um, especially next to some of the books that I've been reading lately. I just wanted a lighthearted, fun read. Next is Of Curses and Kisses by Zendaya Menon. And this book is about a teenage girl and boy who their families have been rivals for a very long time. And the girl wants to get revenge on the family. She pretends to date the boy just so that she can break his heart. But it is a romance, so she finds out that there's more to him than just his family name. I've heard lots of good things about this book from several other booktubers, and so I'm excited to read it. I love romance books. They're usually so fun to read. Next is The Sisters of the Winterwood by Rena Rossner. This was an impulse buy for me. I was at Kroger grocery shopping, and I found this in the bargain bin for $5, and I thought it looked Cool. so I picked it up. Now all I know about this book is that it's loosely based on a Jewish fairy tale about two sisters and the winter wood. Now the winter wood has mysterious things in there and I know one sister thinks that falling in love is more important than staying safe with her sister and but that's about all I know about this book. Um, the synopsis of this doesn't give much away either which is kind of nice because I can go into the book without knowing a lot of detail about it. So I will hopefully be somewhat surprised in a good way for some things in this book. Next, I have My Lady Jane and My Calamity Jane by the Lady Janies, who are Cynthia Han, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. This is the first book in the series and this is the last book in the series. Um, behind me, I don't know if you can see it, but I have My Plain Jane, which is the second one. This first one is about Lady Jane Grey, who is going to become the Queen of England. My Calamity Jane is about Jane Calamity, and it's a American Western story with Annie Oakley. And I'm super excited to read this one. I love Westerns. I love cowboys and cowgirls. So I think this will be really fun to read and I love this time in history with Lady Jane Grey. And what's fun about these books is that they're about these people in history but there's a twist to it. So these people have certain fantastical abilities. So Lady Jane Grey, I believe, it doesn't say on the back, but I believe she's able to turn into a horse, which sounds weird, but I've heard that it works really well in the book. Um, and that this book is really good. My Calamity Jane, I'm not real sure what her fantastical ability is, um, but that will be exciting to find out. My Plain Jane, she sees dead people. That's her fantastical ability. And this is about Jane Eyre. So I think all of these will be great books. I'm so excited to read these. I love fantasy and I love historical fiction. So put those two together. And I think these are gonna be some really great books. Next, I have The King of Crows by Leva Bray. This is the final book in the Diviners series. Here is the Diviners. I've already had this book. I have the um, first three in the series and I just got The King of Crows, um, but I have not read any of them yet, but I, I went ahead and bought the whole series because I've heard so many good things. These are a lot of people's favorite series. Um, some people compare it to um, Harry Potter just in the sense that it's one of those series that are very memorable to them. So 
in this series, it's set in the 1920s, and Evie has a supernatural ability. I believe her ability is to see ghosts, so it helps her solve a mystery. And throughout this whole series, she sees these ghosts, and it's spooky. I think it'll be a great Halloween read, um, but I might start it beforehand, so I have several months to finish the whole series. Um, but I might save the last one for October. So next up is the only middle grade novel that I purchased this month, and that is The Magic Misfits by Neil Patrick Harris. And it's about a group of kids who are magicians, and they go out to save their town from evil. This is the first in a series. I bought it because I thought it sounded very interesting, and I thought that both of my kids would probably enjoy this. Um, my daughter always wants to make sure that there's at least a girl in the story. She's like me. She wants to be able to relate to the story some way or another. But I thought this was super cute. And if they end up liking it, then I'll probably buy some of the others in the series so that I can read the rest of them to them. Next, I have Love Her or Lose Her by Tessa Bailey. I've heard so many good things about Tessa Bailey's books. This book is about Dominic and Rosie and they have been together for 10 years. They are married, they're high school sweethearts, but they've kind of fallen out of love. Rosie feels that Dominic does not love her as much. He doesn't choose to do things for her or show his love for her anymore. Her girlfriends are encouraging her to find herself and do things for herself now, but she doesn't want to give up on Dominic quite yet. So she asks him if they can do a thing, sort of like a marriage retreat, and surprisingly, he agreed to it. So the story is about rebuilding their relationship, saving their marriage, and figuring out what their future is going to look like. So I think this will be such a cute love story. I think so many romances we read are not about married couples, and I'm married, I want to be able to relate at least a little bit to the characters. So I just think it will be cute to finally read about someone who is already married, but how they still love each other. So I think this will be a fun read. I'm hoping to read this for this Valentine's Day. I think it'll be a great time to read this book. Next, I have The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai. And this is the book I got for my book of the month this month. It is a new release for January. And this book is about Daisy and Liam. And Daisy is a software engineer. Her parents only care about who she's gonna marry and her love life. And Liam wants to get his inheritance, but his inheritance is contingent on him getting married. So Liam becomes Daisy's fake fiance. But the catch to this is that Liam was Daisy's childhood crush and he broke her heart all those years ago. So it'll be very interesting. He wants to get married so that he can get his inheritance, but she only needs a fiance to fend off her family for now. So it's that fake dating romance story. I love those kind of stories. I think it will be very interesting to figure out how they end up falling in love with each other. This is a romance, so we know in the end that more than likely they're probably going to be together. So it's just interesting to figure out how their story is going to get there. Next, I have Gone by Nightfall by Dee Gerritsen. This is a story set in Russia in the early 1900s, and it is about a teenage girl who wants to go to medical school, but her mother passes away, so she has to take care of her siblings. But then revolution starts in Russia, and everything descends into chaos, and she has to get her family out. But at the time, she has her tutor, Dimitri, and she thinks that Dimitri is hiding something. So as she's trying to save her family, she also has to figure out what kind of secrets that Dimitri is hiding. So I don't know a whole lot about the story. That's the general synopsis of it. Um, but I'm excited to read it. Like I said before, I'm trying to branch out and read books from other parts of the world. So this is from Russia. I have the one from India and Africa. And those are all books that I've not read any other books set in those places before. So I think that all of these will be very interesting to read. Okay, so my last three books I'm super excited about. They are the Bridgerton prequels. So I have first comes Scandal, which is the first in the prequel series. Then I have the other Miss Bridgerton, which is the second in the prequel series. And I have the third one, which is The Girl with the Make-Believe Husband. And these are all by Julia Quinn, who writes the Bridgerton series. 
And I still need the fourth one in the prequel series. I haven't been able to find it yet. If I can't find it to purchase it, then I probably will get it on the Kindle and read it that way. I've looked all over the libraries, stores, and everything. I can't find that book or any of the Bridgerton books themselves. They are all out of stock or on hold at the library for over six months, which is understandable. The show is super popular. I'm pretty sure I watched that show in one day, which I'm not proud to say, but it was such a great show. It was so addicting. I remember in high school reading stories like this all the time, historical romance, and the show was just those books put to life, and it was so good. If I do get my hands on the Bridgerton novels, whether physically or through the Kindle, and I read all of them, I might do a video just on the Bridgerton novels compared to the show. Because a lot of time when books are made into movies or TV shows, some details are left out, some characters are changed, some attributes are changed. So it'll be kind of interesting to compare the two and see what is different between them. So that is it. Thank you for bearing with me through all of those books. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you wanna be notified when I post new content. All my social media accounts will be linked down below. All the books that I talked about will be linked down below in the description as well if you want to check those out on Amazon. I'll see you next time. Bye.